I've been using it, I started at the intermediate level and then quickly moved to the advanced level and have used it in all of my intermediate and advanced classes um, for the last five years, I think. So when I started, the only option was the 30 minute conversation. So at the intermediate level, um, we did three 30 minute conversations um, and the, uh, the curriculum in, in the class, in my intermediate classes typically is four units, four thematic units. And so I implemented the conversation for the last three units, figuring that they needed the first unit to sort of get, you know, get back into French after the summer and um, develop a little bit of confidence speaking in the classroom before kind of tossing them into the native speaker pool. Uh, so there would be one conversation that was related to the theme of each of those last three units. Um, this year, I'm doing it slightly differently I'm, uh, because the feedback that I've gotten is that for some students, not all, but for some of the intermediate students, it was hard to, to maintain a 30 minute conversation. So we're going to try the 15 minutes and um, I've, I've sort of decided to accelerate the pace a little bit. So um, we're, we're going to start in, at the end of the first of those four thematic units and they will do a conversation for each one. It comes at the end of the unit and the conversation topic is absolutely aligned with everything in the curriculum. Um, so that students have had an opportunity to use all the vocabulary that, that would be useful to them in that conversation and to talk about some of the same things that they're going to talk about with their partner. And then before the first conversation, always, and sometimes before subsequent conversations, we always do an in-class simulation um, just to, again, help them feel a little more confident and less, um, and less frightened of speaking with a native speaker. So um, I break it down by steps and have them prepare um, some things that they'll say to sort of open the conversation and break the ice and then have them formulate a series of questions to ask their partner and then formulate a series of responses to those questions and other questions that they think they might be asked. Um, and then finally, things that they can say to wrap up the conversation and, you know, say thank you, polite phrases and that sort of thing. And that's been really helpful because uni almost universally, when I tell students at the beginning of the semester that they're going to be having these native speaker conversations, they're, you should see the looks on their faces. Like, it's, it's more than deer in the headlights because I don't think deer know what the headlights mean. But uh, they're, it, it, it's kind of terrifying to them. And I always reassure them, don't worry, you'll be, you know, you'll be well prepared. Um, and I think without that preparation, it would, it would really be for some of them just way too overwhelming an experience. But, um, and their, their, their response is usually universally, I was really nervous about doing this. I was really anxious while it was happening, but, um, but it was a really great experience and I learned a lot. Um, and then I have them, so we do that preparation in class, we do that simulation where they pretend that their, part, their partner in class is their conversation partner. And then um, I, I never grade talk abroad conversations based on the content of the conversation. Um, to me, that's not an appropriate use of this tool. I'm, I'm sure others who are more innovative than I am have probably found creative ways to do that. But, I just feel like that, that sort of feels to me like it's penalizing students for engaging, potentially for engaging in an activity that I, I think should be um, a developmental activity. So after the conversation, I always have them reflect on um, what they learned about the culture, what they learned about their partner. Um, I always have them identify at least one thing that they're able to do um, because their first reaction, especially to the first conversation, is usually to be really self-critical and say, oh, you know, I couldn't do, because they're learners, that, I, you know, they're comparing themselves to themselves in their native language. So they say, oh, you know, I couldn't do this, this didn't go well. So we start with the positive, and then I ask them to identify some things that were difficult for them to do or that they couldn't do, and then to identify some things that they could do to prepare so that next time they're able to do those things. 
Um, and that's worked well. So they get, you know, I give them credit for, there's a, there's a rubric for reflection, but it's basically just a reflective assignment that they do afterward. My number one piece of advice is, you know, don't treat it as just like a plug and play. Here, you go off and do this. It really has to be integrated in the curriculum and you have to, you have to think about, you know, scaffolding and backward design and, you know, what are the tools that your students are going to need? What is the support that your students are going to need? And build that into your curriculum. Um,